Hello friends and welcome to our final installment for National Craft Month. I hope you've had a great month of crafting and that it will continue long beyond this that you'll find fun ways to unleash your creativity. So I'm here today, I'm just going to share with you five of my favorite tips and tricks for crafting to either step up my cards or to make crafting just a little bit easier. So here we go, let's get started. Tip number one, detailed dies. If you've ever had detailed dies that you run through and they don't cut all the way out, it can be incredibly frustrating. Believe me, I understand. I, this is one of my favorite dies. It cuts all these little frames. And every time I try it, it does not cut all the way through when I just run it through my big shot as is. But I found a tip thanks to our wonderful friends at Pink Fresh. They have shown some great tips and ways to get these dies to cut all the way through. So let me grab in my big shot. Here we go. All right, so I've got my normal setup for cutting and I've got my, my, my base plate, my die adapter, my cutting plate. I'm going to put down a little piece of a bubble mailer. A great way to reuse, reduce and reuse, recycle. But I'm gonna put that down and then I'm going to put my cardstock down and then my intricate die. And actually, I'm going to step that up just so I make sure I line that up correctly. Put that down. Put my plate across. And pardon the noise because it's going to be just like popping bubble wrap. Here we go. We're going to just crank that through. There we go. A little therapeutic, a little fun as we go. But pull that off. And voila. It has cut out nice and clean, all of them. If I had my die pick, it would help me pull them out, but it's worked every time I have tried it, so I find that one nice, quick, fun way to use those dies and not get frustrated with them. So tip number one, save your bubble mailers. Cut them down, they're great to get those dies cut out. All right, tip number two. If you've ever die cutting and stamp your image, line up your die to cut it out, and then you run it through and it shifts too close to the top or the bottom and it's not quite right, it can be really frustrating. So this one, again, my tips, I do not claim to have come up with any of them myself, but I have just found wonderful use for them and they make things run great. So I have die cut my sentiment, just a die cut, and I'm gonna take the negative spot and my stamp. All right, I'm gonna line my stamp up kind of in the middle, and I'm just going to stamp that down. There we go. All right, I'm going to take that negative. I'm going to add a little repositionable adhesive on there. I'm just going to line that up. And by doing this, I can perfectly line that up around there. And I do still use my magnet just to make sure I'm holding that corner down. Then I take my blank die cut, put a little bit of repositionable on that, and I drop that right in there. Nothing is, my stamp is still in the same spot. Everything's set up. I ink it back up, stamp it down, and look at that. So we bring that out. Nice, even border all the way around the stamped image. No more frustration that it got shifted and die cut part of the image off. So drop in a negative, it works out great. Save you a lot of headaches that way. All right. Here we go, we're cruising right along. Tip number three is using glitter glaze. All right, if any of you have used glitter glaze for a nice glitzy finish, you realize a lot of these are in a translucent gel. And so when you use that on a stenciled image, here I did this one, and I just did this, um, the one layer, 
just glitter glaze on its own and you can kind of see it but it doesn't show up real well and it kind of blends in to the image. So if you want your glitter glaze to really show on those, you want to lay down a layer of color first. So we'll just tack that down. And I haven't added my last layer of my stencil here, so I'm going to drop this in. I'm going to figure out which way I had them first. Uh-huh. Right. There. No, that's not it either. This is what happens when you prep everything at home. There, ha, found it. There we go. Drop that in. And then I did not bring my tape. Where did my tape go? To tape that down. It's okay. We're just going to steal a little from back here. There we go. There we go. All right. So first off, I need to grab my blending brush. I'm going to lay down just a layer, and I'm using Tailored Expressions Honey because I like this as a layer with gold glitz. So I'm just going to quickly throw in, blend in a layer of flowers there. There we go. All right. And now, if you wanted to reuse your glitter glaze, you would want to wipe off that ink, but you do not have to. I plan, I'm just going to use this one, and then I'll just throw my glaze away that I don't use. And I'm just going to go in here, scoop out a little bit of this. This one I'm using is the Brutus Monroe glitter glaze. And then I'm just going to bring that on. And just... Swipe that across my stencil, being sure I'm filling in all the space. There we go. All right. Now, Peel that stencil up carefully. Take off one end of my tape, and then I'm going to hinge it back and just peel it that way. And now you can see the difference that makes showing your gold versus the gold on this first one. How much that pops and lets that stand out more. Gives a lot more contrast. So when those glitter glazes add a layer of ink color underneath that complements or contrasts, and it'll just help that stand out a little bit more. All right, two more tips. Here we go. If you ever want to stand or adhere a full panel to a card front, either designer paper or a stamped layer, and you don't want it to overhang, you want it to line up nice. So, first thing we're going to do is grab my adhesive, and I'm going to put this on my designer panel. Here we go. All right. Now, I could take and try and hold this and set it down and line up my edges and hope that they all line up. And if I don't have, if I mess up, then I trim it down and I never get it quite right. Tuck your base panel into the corner of your misty. Tuck in your top corner and then across and bring it down. Voila. Your panel matches up and lines up nice and even on all sides. So quick, quick, great tip. I use that one frequently because I like to add a full panel on my card front. So hope you try that one. Hopefully that'll ease some of that for you. All right. Now for my last tip for today is one I get asked about a lot and that's splattering. I get a lot of how did you do that? How my splatters never turn out like that. Let me first say that I practiced and played a lot. 
before I splatter. Typically when I splatter at home, I have a little splatter box set up to keep things contained so my whole desk does not end up as splatters. I'm not going to do that today so that you can actually see the process. And in doing that, I'm probably going to make a huge mess. But that's part of the fun of crafting anyway, isn't it? So here we go. If you were with me for one of my previous craft alongs, you remember this panel where I did the, my ink blending my night sky. So we're gonna add that up and add a little splattering to kind of add our stars and Milky Way look to the back. So I'm going to start with a little Dr. P.H. Martin's Bleed Proof White. It's one of my favorite whites for splattering. And part of the thing you want to make sure is your size brush. A larger brush is going to give you bigger splotches. A smaller brush is going to give you a finer splatter. So it depends on what kind of look you're going for. So for this, I'm going to use my little bit bigger brush. This, I think, is a six. And the other one is a four. So I'm just going to dip in here for a little bit of my white. And I'm just putting it in the cap. And then I'll just tap in a little bit of water in that. There we go. Let's get that out of the way. And then there are many different ways you can do this. You can hold your brush and tap. You can tap it on your finger. I like to switch it over. I hold it in this hand, and I start off my paper, and I just start tapping as I come across. You can add as much as little, if you need to go back and add some more white, tap some more. But I find starting it off the image before I bring it across gets rid of some of those first really big blotches and then helps you maintain a little more control. So that's my white. And then I'm gonna zhuzh that up a little bit with my gold, there it is. And the gold I want to be a little finer, so I'm gonna switch to a smaller brush. And this is my Gansai Tombi Starry Night. And I'm gonna go over here to, yeah, which one? Yeah, we'll do this one. And I just add some water in there to get my pigment moving around. There we go, that looks pretty good. And again, I take it over here, start off, and this time I'm starting on the other side, and just tap along, tap along. There we go. And you could go in and add as much as you want. It's kind of fun, come back in and add a little black or a little blue to round that out. But splattering is a lot of fun, adds a lot of depth and texture to your, and interest to your images. So give it a go, have some fun with that. So please give these tips and tricks a try and let us know what you think of them. Do they work for you? So thanks for joining me. It was a quick, fast tips, but I hope you enjoyed them. And thanks for crafting along with us this month. We'll see you next time. Bye.